Welcome to Atlantic Laser Works. We have some exciting new projects going on. Let's jump into the workshop. Today I'm using Resonate Epoxy Resin. I've never actually used resin before. This is my first try. So here's the hardener. I've got about an ounce and a half of the resin in my cup. I'm gonna add exactly an ounce and a half of hardener and stir, but don't over stir. Stir for one to two minutes. I'm careful to scrape the sides and the bottom to make sure there's no pockets. You get the picture. All right, I'm using Resonate's Mica Powders, Magic Orange, Shine Red, Ocean Blue, and Apple Green. These are gorgeous colors. I've measured out a little bit of the mixed resin into each cup and I'm mixing in the Mica colors. The project I'm working on today is actually um, a sign for our display. We're distributors for Resonate Epoxy Resin. So I'm using the Resonate logo. I've used my AP laser to cut out the puddle portions, I guess you could call them, of the logo. And I'm using the resin to fill these in. Scrape it all out, get it all in there. I'm so super savvy, I never want to waste any. So I'm using these little piddly amounts and hoping that I have just exactly enough. I probably should have used the yellow mica for this, but I didn't want to open every single container and I'd already opened the orange one because orange is my favorite color. So we'll just use the orange and we'll call it close enough. Hopefully the kind folks at, a, at Resonate won't mind. Gosh, this blue is so incredible. It's super sparkly and shiny. Now I'm just gonna have fun mixing the colors, blend, fiddle faddle. You get it, this stuff really flows. We've got about 40 minutes working time and I'm working in a pretty cool, um, I've got a paint room that has outside exhaust. So it's a good place for doing epoxy, but you'll also be glad to know, Resonate doesn't just have low VOCs, it has no VOCs. Oh, let me get this out of here, messy. Yeah, that's right. There is literally no smell at all as I'm working on this, not even a paint smell. It's really incredible. I mean, if you feel more comfortable using a mask anyways, you can go right ahead and do that, but I wasn't using a mask uh, you still need to be careful not to get it on your fingers, which is why I've got gloves on. I'm just gonna tidy up my spills here so I have less sanding to do later. All right, bring in the heat gun. Uh, there's a few little bubbles coming to the surface. You can kind of see them popping. They're just kind of micro bubbles. It's, it's not too big of a deal. Noticing the worst of the bubbles are around the edge. Oh, I got... Again, in my saviness, I didn't want to actually purchase popsicle sticks to stir this stuff with. Plus, I don't like throwing stuff away if I don't have to. So, I was just using little snapped off bits from my excess cuttings. And yeah, they left little bits of wood and everything, so that wasn't clever. Um, I think if I'd been using solid wood, it would be okay, but it was plywood, so there's little bits. So, you gotta be careful not to do too much. Oh, I'm going to get these flecks out of here. You'll be happy to see that. They've been driving you nuts, right? Okay. Time has passed. We're going to unclip this. So what I've got here, I, I just put a removable plastic shelf liner on the back of my board and then I clamped it really tightly to another piece of MDF to make sure that it was sealed really well on the back side. So now, let's just, hey, I like that. That came out really well. It's cured overnight and it's really nice and hard. I mean, it's not fully cured yet, so I could wreck it if I tried, but I'm not gonna. So we'll pull this backing off. It actually stuck a lot better than I thought it would. Yeah, the resin's a bit tacky on the back yet, but once we get this plastic off and it can breathe, it can finish curing. And I think it's going to be good. Really, it's stuck way better than I thought it was going to. It was the clamping. Get this all off of here. 
you want to be sure that whatever you've used for backing is really well adhered because it, this resin will look for any little place that it can get out and leak all over and make it a mess. Okay, here we go. That off. Yeah. That's what the logo looks like. I've done these little puddly parts with the resin. I just love the look of it. I, you know, I've never actually been into resin. I always thought it would look sort of plasticky, but it actually just looks like glossy, shiny, sparkly colored glass. All right, we're gonna add the letters. I've cut these letters out of cedar and they're stained with an ebony stain. I've got a piece of tape here. It can be a bit tricky to get a straight line on a piece of live edge. So I've measured up from the bottom, which is straight and put a piece of tape. So I've got a bit of a guideline. Um, usually I'll use carpenter's glue, but I'm impatient with this. I really want to see how it turns out. So I'm using Gorilla Glue, like a super glue type. Just get a straight line and make sure this R is all lined up. Whenever I'm putting lettering on any sort of sign, I'll do the first letter and then I'm going to do the last letter. Making sure that those are in the right spot is crucial. And then you can fill in the middle, you know, sort of visually making sure that your spacing is correct. I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner. Uh, I, I ran this board through the laser in order to engrave that bottom little slogan there, bring your art to life. And I don't know why I didn't just put a faint line where the actual word resonate should have gone. I'm gonna do that next time. I can just like engrave really lightly, kind of with an inset to make sure that my lettering ends up in the right spot. And then I don't have to do all this measuring and centering and making sure my A isn't crooked. And yeah, I think I'm gonna put that I down next because as you can see, there's a little, there's a little puzzle, puddle of resin for the dot of the I as well in the logo. So make sure it, ends up in the right spot and isn't too crowded. Anyhow, you get the picture and with the magic of photography, we're just gonna boogie on ahead, pretend you watched me glue all the rest of those down. I like this Gorilla Glue because it's like 15 seconds and it's solid. Pull this tape off, yes. All right, it's really coming together. Not too bad. So I'm gonna just let this glue fully cure overnight. And in the morning, we're gonna head back into the paint room and I'm gonna do a coat of the professional resin to cover the whole thing. So double, triple, quadruple, check your level because this stuff, the professional stuff is a little runnier. It's more for just doing a nice clear coat. Uh, it goes on thinner and you can't really pour it like you don't want to fill something up with it. Same as the other stuff, measure equal parts resin and hardener. And same thing, you've got about 40 minutes working time, but the great thing about the professional line is that it only takes about four hours to cure. So I tend to be a bit impatient. I like things that go quick. So accurate measuring is important. Let's pop the hardener in there. Uh, this plastic measuring cup that I'm using, I just give it a quick wipe with a rag after I've got everything scraped out, and it should last me for quite a few resin applications. Like I said, I don't like to waste things. I don't like to have to throw stuff away, so she says that she's mixing in a plastic cup. Well, within reason. Okay, so let's just drizzle this over these letters. Oh, I can see it's going to fill up that middle part, and that could be problematic. This might not be the most efficient way. Let's try just uh, wiping on. You can see I've upgraded to popsicle sticks. I didn't actually go and buy these. Uh, we found an old, I was looking for band-aids, and so we found an old uh, first aid kit, and it had a bunch of tongue depressors in it. So, all right. Yeah, we'll rush this along. You get the picture. I'm trying to get this fairly evenly. Of course, again, not want to waste any. I didn't want to just make tons and tons of it. So I'm just making sure I have enough to cover. 
And these little puddles, I hadn't quite filled them to the brim because I didn't want to have to sand off a bunch of excess. So this is also just going to fill that in and make it nice and flat. This little plastic palette knife, I got a pack of these from an art supply store ages ago and it's super handy for this sort of thing. These letters that are engraved, of course they are you know, recessed into the wood, maybe a 32nd of an inch, maybe a 16th of an inch, just a little bit. So the resin just filling those up. I'm gonna tilt it, make sure it's getting everywhere. You see how I dribble it onto my little cup stands? That proves problematic later because they glue themselves to the back of the sign, but they do pop off because of course in my impatience, I checked it before it was 100% cured and hard as a rock. So yeah, just all over the top. Just make sure the letters are covered all the way around. Not too bad. I'm gonna bring in the heat gun here and pop the bubbles again. Like I was saying before, you don't wanna to get too much heat if you start to dry the surface before it's before it has a chance to dry like underneath, it won't ever really properly cure and you'll end up with soft or sticky or a mess. Or you can even crack the top if you're not careful. Let's just make sure this is full. Here's a problem one that I had. You can see all these little frothy bubbles. Um, they started coming out of the wood. I think because this particular, I did two of these signs, thankfully, because I ruined one completely. Uh, the bubbles started coming out because the wood was really porous, and the more heat I applied, the warmer the wood got, and the more air came out, and it was a horrible disaster. I think also these black letters weren't fully cured, perhaps. Like, I put the stain on and then stuck them down and then just went ahead and epoxied, and there might have been a bit of a reaction because I actually got like foam on the outside. No matter what I did, tilting it, tapping it, I could not get rid of those micro bubbles. So in the end, I just thought, well, how far can we actually push this? And I just put more heat to it. And I ended up with this. So I completely ruined this sign. But it's okay because I had a second and it came out really well. I'm really happy with it. It just looks like glass and even those soft cedar letters are really well protected now. So thanks again for joining me at the Atlantic Laser Works Workshop. You can find more information about Resonate on their website, resonate.ca. You can find out more about me on my website, atlanticlaserworks.com or look for me on Facebook and Instagram at Atlantic Laser Works. Be sure to subscribe to my channel because I have a lot more projects that I'm excited to share with you. I really think that epoxy resin and the laser are match made in heaven. Bye for now.